lots of blue tonight. Almost didn't see you for a second. <laughs> yeah, I like the the Blue Man Group does rod building tonight in the basement. The only difference is that is that we're not charging one hundred and fifty dollars a ticket to see uh, us. We should. Yeah, <laughs> we should. You're worth it. Yeah. Oh man. All right. Well, <clears throat> we've got a little bit different setup here. We do. But it's a it's a big week in the fishing industry. I would say it would be huge. Huge, the biggest huge week. The biggest show uh, <clears throat> in the fishing industry. ICAST is in Orlando this week. That it is. Our hometown in our backyard, so that's nice. It is. It's good. We are setting up today. So uh, as you can see, we've got uh, we've rolled out the blue carpet <laughs> for everybody there watching Facebook Live tonight, and uh, we took the old bar top. Uh, Mom helped us get it out of the basement. And uh, we trucked it over to the Orange County Convention Center for ICAST this week, where we've got a booth and uh, we'll be meeting and greeting and showing off all the cool stuff we got. Yeah, that starts mm. tomorrow, right? Starts tomorrow. It's a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and you know it's during the middle of the week because it's an industry show. You know, most uh, you know news outlets and uh, buyers and wholesale buyers and uh, other shops and stuff. So you know, if you're if you're a wholesale customer of ours, if if you're a distributor. Uh, things like that. That's who's going to be there. You know, not not just the general public, um, but uh, you know, we'll be bringing some a uh, little bit of media live from ICAST at yeah. some point. And if you guys are in the area and are <clears> going <throat> to ICAST, you might as well come see Mudhole too if you can. Get yeah. away for uh, half a day or so, a couple hours, and yeah. come check out the shop. And we're open on Saturday too. So yeah, exactly. I think uh, the Saturday hours are what ten to three. Ten to three. Yeah. So um, yeah, you all to swing in here and see the crew on Saturday. So all right. Tell me about what we're going to do tonight. We are going to talk about real seats. We're going to talk about a few new products that we have from CRB. Yep. And then we're going to dive into, uh, I think you're going to do a little demo on the VSS seat from Fuji. Yep. That's a, kind of a difficult one to install for, yep. for you know, somebody that's never done it before. One of my favorite. Yeah. And then um, we're going to talk about the uh, Fuji plate seat. Kind of a unique deal. Yeah, you know, that one, I don't think it gets the love that it deserves. Yeah. So pretty cool, pretty unique deal. And it's, uh, you know, it might look complicated. It might look a little off-putting, I guess. You know, how do I work this? But it's pretty pretty yeah. easy and pretty awesome. So, And then we're going to talk about the SK2 seat, how to set that one up. Because that one is also being a, a split seat with a space in the middle. That's kind of a difficult one to set up for your first time, so we're going to talk about it. Well, yeah, you know, we've got a few tips and tricks as always. Uh, we've got a few tools and things that will help make that job easier. And, of course, we're doing giveaways as always. I think we're doing, what, third place, second place, and a big grand prize with the big chicken dinner for the win. There you go. So, um, anyway, I think we got some people filtering in here. What do you say we get this thing going? Let's do it. Let's do it. There is nothing wrong with your television set. Do not attempt to adjust the picture. We are controlling transmission. I think it gets me every time. <laughs> I love it. I think it gets me every time. I know, Nick's back there tearing up just a little bit. <laughs> it's a good one for sure. All right, so uh, for those just joining us, we appreciate you. It's all about real seats, um, the big real seat show. You know, we got, we got all kinds of names for it. It's uh, <laughs> getting real with seats, you know, something. Ooh. I, don't, I don't really know. But uh, anyway, so thank you for joining us. It's Hunter. I'm Chris. We're here in Mom's basement on lasagna night. And so we're going to do a few giveaways as we go through the show. We're going to be giving away some gift cards. We're going to be doing some handle kits. We're going to be doing a rod kit, maybe. Um, so yeah, you want to just kind of dive right into this and uh, we'll talk about some new products, show you how to use them, and uh, yeah. Yeah, so let's start oh. with, um, let's go new saltwater aluminum reel seat from CRB. Yeah. These are really, really cool. So it's, uh, it's the Comfort Lock. That's the, uh, the name we put on them. We got uh, black, red, blue, gold, black and gold, silver, and a cool gunsmoke color too, which just happens to be my favorite. 
So these come. So we got six colors. Six colors. How many sizes? I want to say they go from a 16 to a 24. I want, I want to say I saw a 24 back 16 there. to a 24. So, you know, you can do anywhere from, you know, a, a, an inshore rod all the way up to, uh, you know, a 24, a, you know, pretty good size offshore rod if you wanted to. Yeah, you know, and, and the, I think the unique part about that is typically when you see all metal seats or, or stuff that's maybe geared for saltwater and saltwater only, you don't usually see it start in a 16. Right. You know, you see it start in a, an 18 or a 20 or a 24, and unfortunately, you know, it kind of leaves out some of the guys that maybe want to do some light inshore stuff or, you know, maybe a snook rod from the beach that, that they could put a 16 on there and maybe like a th uh, 3,000 or a 4,000 size reel. And, uh, you know, they got to automatically jump up to a, to an 18. And, right. you know, I'm glad uh, you guys decided to bring that 16 in. Yep. So that's good. And we also got the matching uh, gimbals. We have two different kinds of gimbals that we brought in. Just a standard kind of tapered style gimbal. And then also... A, uh, a mushroom style, which we call a radius gimbal. Yep. Um, same colors to match up with them, really cool. You'll notice what uh, these <clears throat> components are also really lightweight too. They're not, you know, big and bulky and heavy and yeah. so you save a little bit of weight there too. No, that's awesome and I think that was a good point of, because most of the guys that are doing the aluminum seats, of course they want to get a little matchy with it. I mean, I, I know that we certainly uh, enjoy doing that on, on our saltwater stuff. You know, whether you've got some colors you usually use on the boat or, or you want to match your reels or, you know, because we've got, you know, the gold in there that kind of matches the pen stuff. You know, I know Daiwa's got a lot of blue stuff out. So that's that's the good part is you can kind of do a theme rod, you know, run it through the whole thing, put all your gear that's matching. And, you know, especially if you want to do your light stuff that maybe you're going to catch your bait on like a Sabiki rod all the way up to a 24 and that'll be, that'd be sweet. Yeah. So. And. Last but not least, we've actually brought in our own Palm Swell reel seat. So this was, uh, you know, kind of off the market there for a little bit, and uh, we've been able to bring it back. Um, we got a comfort finish version, and also a non-comfort finish, black and chrome hoods, size 16. Um, and if you guys have used these before, you know they match up to our MHX wind grips, and then we've got, you know, wind grips as well. And of course, cork, CFX, EVA, cork composite, yeah, you name it. I mean, that's 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 the good part is you know we've got multiple MHX grips, we've got a carbon fiber, we've got a couple different cork options, we've got two EVAs, we've got a cork and composite, and it all fits this. I mean, I I would probably venture to say when I first got into the rod building game, this is probably one of the first ones that I built with, and it is. It's ex extremely comfortable. It's got that kind of ergonomic feel to it. Mm -hmm. It always just seems to put your hand in the right spot. You know, some people can't figure out do they want to fish forward, backwards, whatever. Uh, and of course, you know, I have seen guys reverse this seat where they have, you know, fitted in a fish it this way or they turned around a fish it threads forward. Um, so, you know, yeah, it's another one of those that's kind of like that VSS where it, it is somewhat reversible, you know, yeah. and it's comfortable both ways. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, for a spinning rod, Either an uh, you know the comfort um, comfort finish for sure in the um, the palm swell reel seat or the VSS that you're about to show you in a minute. Yeah, that's the only two options I pretty much use on a spinning rod. Yeah, I mean it's you know we we certainly have other spinning seats and you know of course we've got stuff like the CRB colored stuff and and just a barrel seat and you know the great thing about these is is that for a new rod builder they're easy to work with they're easy to set up and it's something that most people are used to right you know like i mean you buy a, a real or i'm sorry you buy a rod off the shelf more than likely you've got a you know a standard kind of lock barrel seat going on uh and you've always fished that way so i mean that's that's a good option but yeah once you start getting a little creative stuff like this uh palm swell or you know the aluminum ones or even that VSS is kind of uh, where you want to jump to. Yeah, for sure. And of course we have, um, you know, the CRB, <clears throat> uh, I've got the casting ones up here, the spinning ones are over there, but, you know, any color that you want to match up, whether it be, um, you know, navy blue, light blue, gray, green, orange, all those will also match up to our CRB rod blanks that we have. So yeah. if you want to get a little crazy with the color combos, definitely uh, try out one of those. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. All right. I think you guys have uh, hung around and listened to us talk enough. Why don't we get into it? So, for me, the VSS is kind of uh, kind of the end all be all. You know, I mean, it's 
it's one of those that it's comfortable, uh, it's lightweight, it hides the threads, um, it, it looks good. You could run it, you know, down locking or up locking, either one, whatever fits you. Uh, you know, Fuji is notorious for, you know, holding pretty much any reel you stick in it and, uh, and doing it very well. So it's, it's hard to beat that. So <clears throat> the only issue is it can be a little tricky. Right. And I'm gonna kinda try to explain this start to finish. Maybe I can kinda head off some issues that you might have. Um, and then also as you go through and you can maybe figure out uh, whether a better way for you to do it or you can make a few tweaks or adjustments or, or things like that. So um, did you wanna hit, you wanna hit a couple questions, yeah. maybe give something away. Are we, we doing do a giveaway before we do this or after? It's up to you guys. All right, before. cool. Yeah. Uh, so let's hit the first question. Is there any way to use an exposed blank reel seat like the Fujis that are specifically sized when the reel seat is too big for the blank? I have one, I have a casting rod. I love to put a certain seat on it, but even the smallest size doesn't fit. Yes, you definitely can do that. Um, and we got a couple up here actually, you know, the popular ECSM uh, from Fuji and my favorite, the ACSM, <laughs> the, the great debate as uh, Chris and I like to call it. So there is a 16 and a 17 for both of these real seats and then you also have a second size. So your second size is going to be the inside diameter, yep. which makes it very nice. They come in, uh, what is it, half, half, half sizes? sizes. Um, from like nine and a half to, okay, so in a size 16 body, they go from either a nine and a half or a ten to fifteen or fifteen and a half, yeah. depending on which one and and whatnot. So that offers a lot of sizes. And I mean, I know that you said, uh, or he said, or she said, it doesn't say, but um, that the real seat is too big for the blank. That has got to be a skinny, very very small. Skinny, what uh, would you say? You could. I would, you could arbor it. Yeah, I would put those like SK arbors in it. Yeah. You know, I mean, so you have an arbor that's like this, okay? And then Hunter's gonna dig out these SK2 arbors. And pretty much all they are is a chopped down, kind of modified version of uh, these arbors. So I think those are the... Um, this is the RS, oh no, uh, that's FA. The FA. The and FA16. These, these are the GAs, so just GAs, the, yeah. the smaller ones. Yeah, so, you know, if you wanted to use this, you could technically, you could add the arbor in a little bit on this backside, and then of course you would have a lot to work with here if you wanted to work that arbor in here, and then I would cut a little bit to work it into the back of the real seat here. Um, but you know, the problem is, is if you use an exposed seat, you're still gonna be worked with this gap here. You know, um, that, that might get a little annoying. You yeah. know? I mean, it, it just might, where you've got a little gap there, you might yeah. feel it on your hand. Um, but I don't know. That's that's something, I, I don't really know what, uh, you know, probably a little more information. If you've got maybe a measurement on that blank that you could help us out with, we could certainly look at a few sizes um, that, that might help you out. I mean, there's you definitely, might, yeah, there's a way to do it. Just a little more information, maybe send us a message and. Yeah. We'll figure out a way for yeah, it. Yeah, we'll, we'll figure out a way for sure. Uh, Albert, you want to get that one? Yeah, there, so man? the Fuji uh, PULS real seat only comes in size 17. If so, would it be okay for a flipping rod to fit standard size uh, low profile ca bait casting reels? Yes, absolutely, Albert. Yep. That should fit, um, you know, even up to your larger, um, you know, big cranking reels and stuff like that. Uh, and down to low profile should be no problem whatsoever. Yeah. Um, all right, Chet's coming by the iCast booth tomorrow. Fantastic, Chet. We'll see you there. Um, you know, bring some beer or something. <laughs> but uh, all right, cool. We'll see you there. Awesome. Um, we're over by the lure tank, so you can look us up on the uh, the sheet there. And uh, we're near uh, American Tackle. We're near Wind Grips. Uh, we're near Cortland. We're and like I said, we're by the lure tank. So. Uh, Brandon, what would be one thing to definitely know for a new rod builder when dealing with reel seats? Um, I've got I've got a couple things. I'll start with one. Okay. So, as with anything rod building wise, try to get yourself a digital caliper because 
that will give you a really good uh, start, I guess you could say. It'll give you a good start on what size real seat you need based on where you want to place it. Because some, obviously, the blank diameters change, you know, and if you want to do something like this exposed seat, you're going to need to know what the diameter is, the outer diameter of that blank at that location where you want to put it. And so many real seats nowadays, you, you have those options of being exposed and, um, you know, get, get you one of those, uh, what you call it, digital caliper, get mm -hmm. you a digital caliper. And then if you've got any questions, you can come to us and say, well, here's my measurement at this place. Can I do this? Can I not do that? Uh, and then uh, second part of the advice, dry fit stuff. Always yeah. dry fit. That's a great a great point there. What you I got? would say um, I would take advantage of the handle kits that we offer. You know, because a big thing is when you start matching up this grip with that real seat and you know, sometimes when you guys are looking online, you, you can't really tell unless right. maybe you call in or you know, maybe it'll reference a grip that'll fit, but sometimes it doesn't. I would say the best thing to do is go ahead and go online, get a handle kit that's going to include everything. It usually even has the winding checks that come with it. It'll have the foregrip, rear grip, butt grip, your, your um, real seat. Yep. It'll have everything in one kit, and that way you're not having to guess and wonder if this fits that. And yeah, and of course that'll going. give you a, a good baseline. Yeah. You'll know where to start, you know, and then you can branch out from there. So, Awesome. Well, let's get down to this. Daniel's question, are tape arbors okay for a real seat? You know what I'm going to say. Yeah, definitely. So I that, use that them could all the be, time. Uh, one good option for the exposed real seat that's too big. Um, you could definitely use tape arbors for that. Um, yeah. I would use definitely more than one. You know, probably use one down here in this section if you can. You know, there's a little bit of room there before the exposed part. Um, maybe and it use, comes in different widths. Yeah. You know? So you use one down there in the where the trigger area is, and then you can probably even go with maybe two separate ones. Like maybe use like the eighth inch mm -hmm. or, or um, which is that guy? Is that the oh, quarter? That's quarter. That's or quarter. quarter. Yeah, yep. use the quarter inch. Do two up here at the top part of the uh, real seat where the threads are, and that way it's going to give you a little bit of gap in there. You'll get some, you know, like a little glue reservoir. Just a better bond. But yeah, you could definitely do that. Sounds good. All right, so the VSS. Let's talk about it. You gonna do a giveaway? Yeah, give some away. So first up, we have our third place winner. So this is gonna be a $25 gift card and a CRB color series real seat of cool. your choice. So we'll pick, uh, you know, pick a little color, pick a little spinning or casting and size. Yeah. Cool, perfect. Winner is Brandon Howard. Brandon Howard. So Brandon, $25 gift card and CRB color series real seat. Perfect. It's yours. Hey, I went to high school with a Brandon Howard. Really? Yeah. He's a cool guy. I'm sure that Brandon Howard is I, pretty cool too. Maybe him? Yeah, I'm probably not. not. <laughs> probably not. <laughs> All right, cool. So let's talk about the VSS. And we're going to be doing the hidden thread sleeve version. So we actually have a handle kit for this. So mm -hmm. under handle kits, we've got it. Or this is how you can go through and you can piece it together piece by piece. So here's the VSS. Okay, I use the 16. It comes in a 16, comes in a 16, 15, and then it comes in a 17, right? Right. Okay, so real quick, on with this being a 16, if you look at the inner diameter here on the barrel, that is not 15 millimeters, okay? It's smaller than that. So the diameter of this barrel on the size 16 is smaller, but they make a 16, 15, which gives you the same outer body as this size 16, but a 15 millimeter barrel. Mm -hmm. So some of the guys that use it for a blank that might have a little bit larger outer diameter, but they don't want to jump to a 17, you got both. The 16, which I have here, and then a 16, 15. So this is, you can buy this just as it is here as the VSS body. Find that on the website, and uh, usually it will come with a, uh, a locking nut here which is just your, you know, your standard locking nut here. It'll come with that um, among, you know, other options. But so this is, you can just buy the body like this. Thank you for bringing just the body in because that's how I get it. Anyway, so now we've got this guy here. So this is the KSKSS slash ASH. 
You got it. I got it. <laughs> I'm surprised, but I you got it. I do not know where that part number came from, but there it is. So this is actually going to lock down onto the 16. There it is. So now you're going to put your grip here. You're going to put your grip here. And all of this is closed nicely. Now, on most of the reels that I use, a 2500 or a 3000, whether it's Shimano or Daiwa, this right here will actually lock all the way down and close. So there won't be a gap here. You're not going to have this going on and then your hands caught in there, you get pinched. That's a key for me and, and so many of y'all that, that use it. So that is the two pieces, the body and the uh, hood cover there, and that will lock it down nice and tight. Now, if you notice, there is no threads exposed here with this, uh, with this hood sleeve or whatever we want to call yeah. this. The issue with a 17, and it's not a big issue, but just be aware that it's there because you will booger up your cap here, is the inside of this barrel will hang out of this in a 17. So I probably should have grabbed that to show you guys, but just keep in mind, if you buy a size 17 VSS body and you use this KSKSS slash ASH, the barrel with the threads will stick out higher. It will come up here, which the problem with that is when this is put on here, it goes all the way down and it bottoms out there. And as you turn this and lock it, it will then, the threads will push this off and it will break it. So just be aware of that because that is, that's just one of those things that you find out the hard way unless you have Facebook Live. Less. Like this. <laughs> so anyway, those are a couple tips. <clears throat> Let's get down to business and show this. All right. So we've got our pieces and parts. I particularly like to use this rear piece here. There is a couple different options. There's this one. There's solid cork with no composite. And then there's also EVA and EVA two-tone, uh, I believe. So there's the EVA option and the composite option with cork on it. This is one I use, one, because I like cork, two, I like the composite end so it doesn't chip at the cork, and three, it looks awesome, and four, I use it. More importantly, <laughs> yeah. it just looks awesome. Cool. All right, so what we're going to do is <clears throat> the cork is, it's got to be reamed, right? So thankfully, Martha Stewart was here earlier. She pre-reamed all of these cooking show style, and so what you would do, drill, stream reamer, chuck it in let it rip but since we already did that here is one of my tips that I gave earlier we're dry fitting everything this blank and this reel seat especially we're gonna dry fit so okay we got a dry fit that's where we want to do it mark it you know use either a red or a black China marker here because it's a white blank or put you a piece of tape so what we're gonna do mark that and then now you're gonna be left with this area in here that when this is slid down, is going to mate up nicely. That's what it's gonna look like. You're gonna hold it like that. It's a thing of beauty. Here's the catch. How do we get this real seat, which is loose, how do we get it arbored onto this blank here so that everything fits nicely and snugly and properly and you don't bust it off? Because you can't arbor this because you can't slide this down. So you can't put your arbors on, then slide this on, and you can't take it from this end because you want it to come down snug. So another thing I do is, because I'm a tape arbor guy, so I tend to mark right behind, hang on just one second, so here's option one. So I mark right here where the, uh, I'm gonna leave that tag long so you can see it. I mark here, which is right where you can just barely get tape on there. Now the good thing about this is, you have a lot of barrel forward of that uh, grip to put your arbors into. And if you do it properly, you can actually work your glue down into this cavity and it will allow you to have everything clean lined up well and all that. Now, is there a graphite arbor that fits in this? Of course there is. I don't use it, 
but of course there is. Now, another option, before I go any farther, another option is if you are someone that gets a handle kit or if you're a winding check person and you like the CRB silicone winding checks, which are killer for this, or if you like the rubber uh, plastic winding checks that we have, yep. you can always slightly overreen this and you can slide this down a little bit, do a couple arbors that where you'll actually get an arbor in here and then you just bring this back up. The arbor's halfway through here and then you just do two more or three more up here, arbors of your choice, and then slide it down. But I don't tend to do it that way, um, and I, I haven't had any issues. And of course, I'm using this composite butt end here, so it gives me a little freedom to bring it to where it needs to be and have a nice snug fit with no winding checks. Cool. So that's, that's just kind of part of what I do. So um, there is, is good and snug. I'll use this wider, um, Sorry, I don't want to knock your no, water okay. off there. It's okay. Um, I'll use this wider one just so that you guys can see it. So again, everybody knows I'm a tape harbor guy. I'm being a little less delicate than I would if I was actually doing this to glue it up. And don't worry, I'm not going to wrap all three arbors on air. So, I nailed that. That's pretty good. That is just... You've done that a few times? That's right. All right, so that's going to slide in and be nice and snug. Now, when you know you got the one where you want it, you can again take and put a piece of tape up here. You can put a piece of tape up here <laughs> to mark it. We are live, folks. Cool. So put a piece of tape up here to mark because what I do is with all of the real seats that I use tape arbors on, I like to know right to the edge where that uh, seat is going to be, mm -hmm. and then I like to bring it down and put my arbor. I always like to have a little bit of room there between the very top and my first arbor because I pack that glue in nice and tight. Yep. And most of these real seats... I don't believe you're going to be able to see it with this one, but we're going to try it anyway. So if you look down the barrel of this, what do you think? So if you look down the barrel of this, you can see there's ridges inside of there. And those are just longitudinal lines that help keep the, uh, the real seat from spinning. So that's just one of those, you know, good ideas by the real seat manufacturers to you know, keep it from spinning when it's on the blank from the torque that you apply to it. So what I like to do is I like to maximize the efficiency of those little guys. Mm -hmm. And I will mark the edge of my real seat. I'll slide in a little bit. That's where I'll put my last arbor so that when I'm putting epoxy in here, you know, you put epoxy and you slide it down and everything kind of gets pushed this way. There's always, you know, a void left up here. And I always take and turn it on its side. And I take that popsicle stick, turn it, and I scrape that down into it. And of course, I don't worry about getting epoxy in my threads because I have them taped off. Mm -hmm. um, that probably should be one of those like top three tips when dealing with real seats is tape your threads. Whether you use this quarter, which is a, a pretty good one because it'll help kind of work its way down in those threads and really protect them. Or if you want to use the half, but always tape your threads. Um, it's just a good habit to do, whether you're using a metal seat, a, you know, a graphite seat, because then you can get, you can get wild with it. Yeah. Just get, get sloppy with it, throw it in there, get ready. You just peel it back and, and you're ready to rock. Easy so, clean up. Yeah, and then when you wipe it, I always wipe down and twist it because then that extra little kind of squeegee effect will push it down in there. And then when it dries, it'll be good. You'll have that last little kind of barrier there. Yeah. Um, so that's how you set it up. That's how you measure it out. And again, uh, for those that didn't catch it earlier, you can always overreen this end, slide it down a little if you've got winding checks to kind of cover the gaps, and then that way you can add in another arbor. But for me, I would certainly add in another arbor here, and uh, that would give me the security that I need when mounting this seat. And then we just slide it in. Now, uh, one or two other little tips. If you notice, 
there's kind of a trough in here and it runs all around. It runs the whole perimeter of this. So the edge of this grip, it doesn't really go down in and tuck into the trough, uh, but there can be a void that's created in there if you don't work the glue in. So what I do is this is another good opportunity to take and turn your popsicle stick on its side and push in this whole trough in here. I push a little bit of glue all through here so that when it mates up, it will glue the, you know, kind of the perimeter of the seat. And then when you wipe it off clean, the face of this cork is met with glue and not just hanging out. And then it'll never want to lift or move. And then after we get that, so we slide her down, we glue it, right? We're all glued, we're all tight. I wipe this clean, good and clean, and then I actually take tape. I start on the side of the reel seat where the foot goes, and I start wrapping, okay? And I pin this cork down, and I do overlapping wraps all the way down it, because if you can see, I'll overlap there. The reason I do that is once it's completely cleaned off, and it's ready to rock. When you overlap these, these wraps, there's no space where the glue can go. It can't get out in between all these. If you left space in here, it will create like a razor blade seam of, of epoxy right here where your hand's gonna be. So then you're gonna have to chip it off and you know try to pick at it with you know one of our thread picks to, to let it go. But, this is the way that I finish it. So push it together, let the glue kind of work in there, clean it off, and then I'm gonna tape it off. So, and then I set it aside. Yep. So um, that's the rear portion of that. Of course, the grip or, or the, the fighting butt is kind of self-explanatory. Um, you know, just ream it to fit, put your winding check on it and do that. Now, another fun tip with these guys. I know I say dry fit everything. Don't dry fit this, okay? These fit so good that if you take this and you shove it down on the top of this thing here, you won't get it off. Mm -hmm. So don't dry fit this. Just make sure you know, that you bought the right size, put it kind of halfway on, and be good. Now, a couple glue tips for this whole thing. I take and put a just razor thin skim coat of glue on this here and I just turn the popsicle stick on its side and scrape it like this, okay? Just razor thin. Then what I do is I take the same glue and I take it on the inside of the cork and I just do like a, just a wipe. The reason I do that is because inside of this cork kind of uh, hood cover here, there's voids in there. It's just natural voids in the cork, just it is what it is, but I wanna make sure that the voids are full and then I wanna make sure that it mates up with this uh, hood cover here. So when it locks down, you're good to go. Now, what can happen, and I've seen this happen before, is if there is too much glue on this, or there's too much glue in here, when you push this on top of this, and I'm gonna go ahead and do it, and then just cut it off later. So when you put it on there, and you look down this barrel here, on the inside top of this cap here, so inside of here, there is a, there's a, a face, okay? If you put too much glue in here, there'll be kind of like a collar of glue on the inside. And I always double check it like with a small flashlight or my phone, you know, I'll turn and look down in there just to make sure there's not a huge stack of glue in there. Because if there is, and like I showed you earlier, when it locks all the way down, everything is so, such a tight fit in there that it won't allow it to lock all the way down. Yeah. So what I would do is take a Q-tip and I would dip it in some alcohol and you can stick it in there and just go around the inside of the perimeter there and pull that out because if not and you're left with just kind of a big, you know, crusty chunk of glue in there, it will, it won't lock all the way down. Yeah. And then, you know, you'll, I told you not to. <laughs> so yeah, we'll just take that one out There of it is, <laughs> just coming out of inventory. So, um, yeah, that, that's kind of the VSS in a nutshell. Um, Let's see. And I would leave them, you know, you do not have to put this cap or this hood onto the real seat after you glued everything up. I'd, 
Leave Please them, don't. Leave them separately. Yeah, I glue up. this and, and leave it over here. Yep. Just remember to put it on before you start wrapping guides. <laughs> exactly. We've seen that before, too. Uh, so. Let's see. Let's do a few questions. Jose, yeah. uh, won't the tape uh, pull out the cork grain? Nope. No, it will not. Use duct tape, it might. Uh, but this, this tape here will not pull it out. And it doesn't leave any residue on your real seat. Nope. Uh, we use masking tape for a lot of things in rod building. Just for that very fact, you know, whether you use it to, uh, you Hold know, that some tape. Yep. Hold it right there. Um, you know, you can put, we used to do, uh, you know, if you don't have a china marker, you can just put a piece of tape, wrap it around, and I used to do that for, you know, doing the spine. Just put a mark on there, you know. Mm -hmm. it's, there's so many things you can do with masking tape. Yep, for sure. So, yeah, I mean, this, this masking tape is, it, it's not a masking tape that is a really, really heavy tack tape. You know, it's, it's a pretty light tack tape. It's enough to, stick to it but it's it's not going to you know pull out any of the uh you know kind of grain or, or anything that's uh you know in that cork you know definitely don't use duct tape don't use you know um all kinds of crazy heavy like 10 week tape or whatever they call it yeah um so yeah don't do that um how about uh, we got is that smith stewart or is that stewart smith what do you think i don't know go ahead Stewart. Yeah. What is the best way to ream an arbor? Uh, oh, I know why you pass this one to me, because you don't use arbors. Because I don't use yeah. arbors. What is the best way to ream an arbor? Uh, I use your reamer on an arbor that came with the wind grips, and it got off center. So what I would recommend, uh, why I use Smith or Stewart, whichever one you go by. Uh, what we got? We got one up here. here yeah, right there. So let's do this. So what I do, instead of trying to ream the arbor by itself, Glue the arbor into your real seat, all right? Let that sit overnight, then come back and ream it from there. For one, you're gonna have a much better, you know, handle on it. Sometimes these, these reamers, you know, there's not, or uh, the arbors, there's not much to them. And you can kind of get off center and, mm -hmm. you know, super easy, right? That easy. That easy. But it's, it's if ruined. it's in a stable position and you got a better grip with the real seat, then you can just zoom, 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 yep. fit it, and you're good to go. Yeah, I mean, these arbors are not, they're not anything that are hard to ream or, you know, it, what makes these strong is the fact that you're putting, you know, your pro paste in there, you're gluing them in there and all that, and then it's got a really thin line of glue on the blank and then a thin line of glue on the thing. Uh, but you can get these off center and oblong and all wallered out just so quick. Yeah. So just be very careful and gluing the arbor into the seat yeah. is the best arbor advice that you will hear tonight from him. Because I got no arbor advice. Nah. Just use tape. Just use tape. Uh, <clears throat> and along with that, just go slow. Don't go super fast when you go to ream. Even if you have to use a couple different sizes, start with the smallest one. Yeah. Go super slow. Just or just don't use the don't use the drill too. You know, like yeah. you said. Yep. Uh, <clears throat> Bill, what is the best way to get glue off of the handle? Um, so we typically use like 91% uh, isopropyl or isopropyl alcohol, um, some paper towels. That's that's really about it. Yeah. Um, you can some, use 70, but 90 works a little yeah, bit better. Yeah, and then um, some of those like really hard to reach places, you know, between the gaps. Um, you can kind of avoid all that. You know, you can do the tape trick here too. Tape off that um, that little edge on your uh, yeah. There's no way that's going off. Yeah. Yeah. Ta tape off the again, uh, right? tape off the edge just like you would do on your uh, your threads here. There we go. Yeah. Well, I knew I was gonna and, um, magically glue that one shut. That's gonna really help with cleanup. But besides that, paper towels, the 91% uh, al alcohol. You can use like a toothpick for those really really small edges. Yep. I mean. <sighs> It's, it's not fun, pretty much, you know, you just got to get in there and clean it up. Yeah, yeah, but, you know, using the 91 will certainly help a lot. So, um, all right, cool. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Tim, does the tape, or does the Arbor tape stand up to time or does it start to break down over time? Um, I mean, I've got rods that have been extremely heavy use extremely heavy use, whether it was bass tournament fishing, uh, guide trips, in the Florida heat, on the front of a bass boat, towed it all over the place. 
Uh, I still have some of the original ones that I built, um, and I haven't had a tape arbor fail yet. Keep in mind, okay, we want to talk about tape, and we want to talk about, oh, it's just tape, and it's whatever. This is only used to center the real seat. There is no structural properties to this tape arbor, okay? So when you're gluing your real seat to your blank, you're gluing the seat to the blank. You're not gluing the seat to the tape and then the tape sticks to the blank, okay? So that's, you know, I, I'm sure you probably know that, but it's one of those deals where if you've got a real seat like this and you got one, two, three, um, you know, uh, all that is is it just centers it on the blank and it holds it there while the glue does all the magic. So again, I, I've never had a tape arbor fail on me, never had one spin, yeah. never had one break, never had one any of that, but I take my time. So I make sure that when I wrap a tape arbor, maybe that guy right there, the, no, not the other one, the one that's underneath the white one. Yeah. I make sure when I wrap a tape arbor, you know, that I'm doing my best, you know, to make it come right over the top and to stack it as good as you can. Because if you do this deal here, and one of these, and we got some of this going on and all that, that's going to cause your grip or your real seat to fail. It's not going to cause the tape to fail, it's going to cause your glue bond between your rod blank and your real seat to fail because of all this nonsense you got going on there. So really just keep it as thin and tightly compact as you can where you know it looks like that. It's just the width of the whatever tape you're using, whether you're doing a half, whether you're doing the quarter. Um, I don't usually recommend doing an eighth size because that's, you know, that is so thin to work with and there's so little adhesive on that tape because it's so thin. Yeah. It's, it's kind Unless of you got like a small spot like we were talking earlier, you know, something like that. Unless you have to use it. Yeah, I would try Stay to avoid using it. using that if, if at all possible. So Let's do one more question and then we'll give away. Give away! Danny, can you use plumber's Teflon tape? What do you think? Danny, I gotta tell you, man, uh, that tape is so thin, I feel like you'd be there for a month trying to wrap that Teflon tape. Um, but, you know, al along the same argument of the tape doesn't give any structural, you know, I mean, the, the Teflon tape is pretty much going to repel anything that touches it. But then again, you know, as long as you're gluing your real seat to your blank, then, then you're probably okay. Uh, would I use it? No, I would not use it. I would find something else as, as as you know anything else yeah. just no I wouldn't use that and two it's just you know it's it stretches so much and it's so hard to get stacked on there and if you do it it's you know it's kind of squishy and yeah you know I mean it's great for what it is you know you put it on a on your shower head threads and screw it on it, it's great for that but it's I don't think it really has a place and uh, what you call it in rod building so give something away all right so let's do this this is the runner-up prize we're going to do a handle kit that includes the CRB Palm Swell uh, real seat. And the winner is Justin Bray. Justin Bray. Justin Bray. So you're the winner of uh, a handle kit that includes the CRB Palm Swell real seat. Cool. So you can go through and, uh, what you call it? We'll go through and pick the, um, the parts. You know, you can do cork or MHX wins or stuff like that. Yeah. I lean toward the MHX win, but for sure, you know, that's for sure, just fits pretty good, pretty pretty good. All right, Justin Bray, congratulations, man. All right, Hunter, man, what you got for us now? What do you think? You want to do the? Um, you want to do uh, what? SK. We want to do what? Maybe we can talk about this real quick. Yeah, let's um, knock that out real quick. Yeah, okay. we're not gonna do. Do you want to do a demo? I mean, what are we gonna do? We're just gonna. Well, I'm just gonna show them real quick. Okay. Talk about it and uh, grab that that larger diameter blank that I had too. So the plate seat from Fuji. It was just asked about, you know, yeah. directly to us. There was actually a, a pretty cool example of this. If you guys are not, uh, or if you have not joined our uh, our new Facebook group, um, 
Mud Hole Lives Rod Builders Workshop. Okay, nailed it. If you haven't joined it, you really should because there is a ton, a ton of good stuff in there. I actually checked it out earlier today. Really? Uh, yeah, I did, from yeah. From the house? Nice. Yeah, I, I did. <clears throat> and there is a cool <laughs> example of this seat in the comments. Uh, I believe for uh, for this, this show, the post for this show, there's a, there's a person that submitted a, a picture of this seat using paracord. Yeah. Which is really, really cool. Um, basically, you know, which Chris is going to show you in a second, you would wrap on each side of this plate seat. And then it's also got a small indention right here, about, uh, you know, three quarters of the way up. Um, but this person actually incorporated paracord, so, you know, it starts down here, work its way up, and then it actually goes under the seat, um, incorporates this indention here, and then keeps going, finishes off. Um, really, really cool. So if you haven't checked that out, um, I wish I knew the guy's name. Sorry about that. But um, most of these real seats, I would say, are used on surf rods, correct? Yeah, you know, uh, surf rods and, and stuff that, you know, the, the blank diameter is so big that, you know, you would need that 24, 26, you know, something that's like, all right, that's, that's a little, it's a little too much to hold, so. Are you ready there? Yeah, we're about, we're about close. So the cool thing about the plate seat is it has like a locking, it's got a <laughs> heavy duty. Yeah, uh, so it's, it's got a locking deal, right? So what that is, is this kind of a locking hood, I guess you would call it, slides up and down, right? And of course it doesn't matter if you want it to be up locking or down locking or whatever. So that, you just put your reel in it. Didn't we have one here? Yeah, why don't you hold this bad boy for me? Set that stuff. Yeah. Cool. Dun, dun, dun. So that goes in there. You slide that hood down, and it locks. And there you have it. So that's what a plate seat looks like, okay? The cool thing about this is, one, it's extremely lightweight. Uh, it can go on very large outer diameter blanks, um, and you can technically move this. Mm -hmm. So depending on how you have your paracord, how you have your grip, how you have any of that stuff, you can actually, instead of taking this and gluing this to the blank, like you would glue any of those other real seats, you can technically use the kind of the thread spots here, which are, get this thing locked again, I'm gonna take a finger off. You would wrap thread here, you would wrap thread here, and you'd wrap thread here. So I'm gonna put a piece of tape, and I'll quickly show you how this goes. Since I love wrapping live on the air, on the spot, it's just nothing could go wrong, right? Just love it so much. But we do it for you guys. All right. And hopefully at times it'll give you a little bit of comedic relief for the show. All right. So uh, this is how I would do the plate seat. Put a little little groove there. That's what's gonna help me hold it in place. Let me get her to jump up on there. Glad I used A. Now I see why you wanted to do the mm -hmm. other demo. I don't know. You were you were kind of the the thread master the last time. You're doing all the the weave stuff and whatnot. Yeah. Probably a good idea to uh, prep these guys with maybe a, a file or, you know, grind down that edge a little bit. Yeah. Thanks for telling me now. No, you got it. Yeah. No problem. All right, so we see that there. So that is how you get her going, right? So you are going to wrap right up that foot 
and just keep her going. Most of the time you're going to be using a large diameter blank and again I don't want to hear any comments from the peanut gallery about the gaps in my thread here but uh, this would be how you would go about it. Now the cool thing is, is as I was saying if you want to ever move this you are pretty much just cutting off this thread, this thread section, and this thread section and sliding it up or down. So that's the cool thing. So you're going to wrap this. I would probably wrap it in D and then I would put your finish over that and uh, yeah. Easy. You're ready to rock. Now another cool thing is if you're going to do the paracord and you want to kind of hide your thread wraps, um, you know, I would probably just use like a white nylon, something that, you know, is, is going to be a little transparent I, or I would try to maybe uh, match the blank color um, or match your paracord color because, you know, like I said it, and like Hunter said, you know, we, we've seen some really cool stuff with this and, uh, you know, it, it allows you to kind of, you know, let your imagination run wild per se when you have these options. So, uh, yeah, I'd get, I'd get funky with it. There you go. Do, do your paracord, do uh, your thread wraps underneath it, and then let's say, you know, you fish with it and you want to give it to a son or a daughter or a niece or a nephew and, you know, you need to move the reel seat. Uh, you don't have to worry about damaging your rod blank or cutting the butt section off or something like that. You can just come in, unwrap paracord, you can cut these off, move them up or down, and, uh, yeah. So, it's kind of why I think it's a neat, uh, a neat option. And there's a number of different... This one is probably the most basic. I think, what is this, a, like a FS6 or something? F or F FS or LS7? I think LS it's a 6. LS7. LS7? LS7? <clears throat> Where am I? All right, so anyway, this one uh, is kind of the most basic. Um, it comes in black and it comes in this polished. Um, and like I said, it's probably the most basic. There's a number of them back there that come with, you know, like rubber cushions up underneath this and things like that that are, that are there for some serious heavy duty work. Um, and that one, I just, I didn't want anything to take away from this, you know, but, you know, that's, that's what that one is. Kind of the most basic. Uh, they're not expensive. They last for a really long time. And, you know, God forbid you do have a problem with one of them, you can cut it off and replace it just like you can cut it off and move it and you don't have to damage your, uh, you know, your rod blank. So even if you want to do a ton of decorative wrap and then put the real plate on top of all that decorative wrap, have at it. There you go. You know, have at it. So, all right, Hunter, man. All right, let's do this I'm going to go eat some pizza. I'll see you later. All right, well, good to talk to you. You're not a, a lasagna guy? I thought that was what was for dinner tonight. Yeah, she's got both. Yeah. All right, so for our last little uh, demo, and I'm not going to do much on the install. I'm just going to show you kind of how to set it up. So the SK2 reel seat from Fuji is a... Ooh, you brought the fancy one. Yeah. So this is actually a painted one. It's a little bit nicer than the one that I, uh, that I have for to show you guys. But so you'll notice this is a split seat. So we have, this is the spinning version. There's a casting version as well. We have a fixed hood here, our sliding hood here, and then also a threaded barrel. So what you'll get in the kit is that exact same setup. We have our fixed hood, our threaded barrel, and then our sliding hood, which is our, what I refer to it as, that's going to go on, you know, your, uh, your threaded barrel. And also, you're going to get two of the arbors that we talked about earlier. So, this might be the only place I use arbors. Graphite arbors, that is. That's a good point, yeah. This might be the only place. So, what I would do first would be, obviously, glue these arbors into each, uh, each well, your, your fixed hood there. And then also your threaded barrel, right? Which it comes with one, 
you could probably get away with doing two tape barbers if you wanted to. Yeah, and that's typically what I do. Yeah. I, I use the graphite in the base plate or yeah. in the base whatever we're calling it. Just because that. it fits absolutely perfect yeah, inside of there. It's just too good. It's, it's like not it's made too long. It. It's not too short. It's perfect. Looks like it's made for it. It is. Yeah, you got it. So what I would do to start this setup and really what it boils down to, the most common question is always how far or how much space do I leave in between the fixed hood and your threaded barrel, right? That's, that's what it boils down to. And that's the number one, that's how you'll mess it up. Yeah. So what we like to do is, obviously you want to um, lay out your entire handle. This is where the dry fit comes in as always. You want to figure out how far you want your handle to be or to the back of the real seat, right? Which that one for a spinning rod is probably like nine, nine and a half. Then, once you have that mark made right there, the one thing I like to do is obviously you'll, you'll put your threaded barrel on here, you know, go ahead and say it's mocked up and everything. To figure out this space in between and to get your fixed hood to where it needs to be, there's two things you can use. One, if you have a spinning reel or if you know the one you're going to use, you can, you know, put this guy in here. And now obviously these two hoods, this one is actually perfect. So that's your end goal, right? So what you want to do is go ahead and, um, you know, say you want to use your graphite arbor. You're going to put it on the rod, or it's already glued in there. You're going to ream it out to fit, slide it down. That's going to be your starting point. From there, you're going to, you know, put your, your fixed hood. It's already reamed out. You slide it down. And then you want to make sure that you got a snug fit for both of the hoods, right? So if you need to move it a little bit closer or move it a little bit farther apart, that's what's going to be the main focus on this space in between here. And obviously you can come in at a winding check. Fuji has the uh, WCS plastic winding checks. Or yep, they snap in. They snap in both sides and that finishes up your ends, you know, perfectly. And those are also, like, like you mentioned, let me cut you off. Yeah. Those are also sized just like the ECSM and the ACSM. Those are sized whether it's a 16 or a 17, and then they're sized with an inner diameter, 9 and a half, 10, 10 and a half, 11. So that's how you, you know, you make all that work. Yeah. You can also use the CRB alignment tool, which is made to fit inside of a real seat. And again, all you're looking for is for this uplocking seat to be able to tighten down enough and be snug. That's going to determine your distance between your fixed hood and your threaded barrel. And from there, you're, you're good to go. Yep. But I would definitely recommend using the reel. You know, if you can, you're not always going to have the exact reel that you're going to use on your build, right? Yeah. That's where this uh, alignment tool comes into play yep. perfectly. That, that works well. And of course, you know, most reel foot or most reel feet or foots or whatever are Almost identical. Almost identical. They're so close, you probably probably wouldn't notice. But you know, like like Hunter was saying, what makes me nervous is when you're putting this together, and you've got you know your section here, and then you've got your section here. If just for a hypothetical, this is what it would look like. So if we could see through this, right? So this is on here like this, right? Like that. If we could see through this, you would want it, you know, to be about like that, right? You kind of want this be equidistant up under the foot that that one is. The problem is, is if you do not measure this, you could do one of two things. Either the threads will be like this, and it'll defeat the purpose of having a split in your section there. Now, that's probably the safest boo-boo. What ends up happening is when you really booger it up and it's like this. Yeah. And if it's like that, you're, you're probably going to have to redo it at some point because there's just not enough meat there to lock that seat down. And what will end up happening is it'll get wobbly on you or you'll continue to try to tighten it down over, over time and it'll just wear it out. So this is another one of those. Uh, I know we've said it 11 times, but this is when you got to dry fit. You got to dry fit. You got to measure. Um, it's just so important. But it is that easy. I mean, Hunter showed it to you in like four minutes. 
Yeah. It really is that easy. Just use your China marker, use your tape, and, and just dry fit it. That's that's really all there is to it. So. And it works the same with, with the casting version too. You know, just make sure your threaded barrel. Um, and, and of course, it can be flip flopped. Not on the casting one, but the spinning one can be flipped the other way. Yep. So depending on which way you put it on that rod, that was up locking. Yep. So you just want to make sure your threaded barrel is in the position where your handle link should be. After you do that, you're just going to move your your fixed hood, you know, up and down to where you get a secure lock. And I would say, what would you say? Maybe like at least a third of the way onto the barrel, at least. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I would like it to get about halfway on it. Halfway. And, and you know, if you can, that one is almost perfect to where as this locks down, if it can make those threads disappear to like right there, where you can just barely see the threads and then your foot's in there, that is about as perfect as you can get it. Yeah. Because then that means you've got plenty of, plenty of foot on there. Whoops. Once this is in here, and I'll show you here real quick. Try to see if I can't get this off without it. There we go. So that's where it was. So you've got plenty of foot on there, like Hunter said, about a third. And when it locks down, it locked all the way down to shut those threads out. And that, at that point, it's that's perfection. That's your, you know, aesthetically perfect, but also getting the maximum benefit out of it, as if you can get it to lock down where it's just almost. I mean, just perfect. And then all you'll see is a little trim winding check there yep. and a trim winding check on the back side. So you'll have plenty of, uh, plenty of foot grip there. And uh, that's it, that's yeah. the one. And I didn't even show, but you can also put, you know, this one just has a basic thread wrap in here, but you can do, um, you can do decals, you can do, uh, Gosh, I don't know, you could do abalone if you wanted to. Yeah, because you know, you've got some relief there from, from your rod blank up to the top of your threads or this like kind of butt section here. You know, you can see it in there. There's some relief height wise. I mean, yeah, you could, you could probably even do a tiger wrap with yeah. multiple coats of finish, multiple layers of thread and probably still be okay. Yeah, you definitely could. And the good thing is, is that finish, you know, it's, it's hard, but it's not like super, super hard. So if it ran right to the top of it, it would just add a little bit more support to the real foot. It, it wouldn't, it really wouldn't get in the way. Yeah. So, but yeah, I mean, you know, some guys are doing decals where they put a couple layers of finish, then put the decal, then put a layer of finish. And then the decal has some kind of a, you know, 3D effect kind of, you know, it adds depth to it because yeah. the, the decal is off the blank. Yeah. And if you do a spinning version of this, don't put your decal on the underside because that's going to be covered up. So make sure you do it on top. And the cool thing is, since the spinning reel is on the bottom, you're going to be able to see that little area right there. That's it. So don't put the decal on the bottom side where the reel goes. Put it on top and you can see it while you're fishing. There you go. I'm telling you, that's the kind of advice you get here at the the basement. Just common sense stuff. That's the good stuff. Hey, yeah. I think we've all, you know, kind of boogered them up here or there that we thought was easy and common sense. But uh, uh, Corey has a question. Will the two-part epoxy go bad uh, for handles and real seats? Um, I recognize that name. I think he's won something before. Really? Yeah, that Sprayberry. I think he did. I think he won last show. So the paste epoxy, um, I'm not sure if we put a one year shelf life on that or not. I don't know, but I have had it to where it kind of just didn't look right. Yeah. You know, and, and it was one that, you know, it was old. I mean, old. And it was one that I forgot about that I had. Yeah. You know, it was like, oh, I've got a couple of different ones here and I used almost all that one and that one. And then maybe I took one that I only used half and it got put over here. Because as you know, and my wife knows, I never leave anything lying around or out of place. <laughs> right. So when I put it somewhere where I shouldn't have put it, and it was somewhere where I didn't know it was at, and then I found it, and I was like, thank goodness, I've got some, oh, that looks, 
<laughs> that looks bad. So no telling how old it was. It was well over a year. Yeah. Well over a year. And it will start to turn uh, a really dark, like amber, uh, or even like an orange color, and it can crystallize too over time. Yeah. So yeah. And the the uh, the other one, um, it will get kind of like chunky white in it. Yeah. You know. I would say past a year, I'd scrap it. Just buy some, you know, new paste epoxies, no big deal. Yeah. Uh, especially for your thread finish too. Don't ever let that go past like a year or so. Yeah. Um, it's not that expensive. Just, you know, it's yeah. it's not worth the hassle of going through, you know, gluing up your handle or putting finish on your guides. Have to redo and it, it. Turns out that oh. you have to redo it. So Yeah. I mean just watch the show. You win stuff, you know? Just I win some finish or something. There you go. So Martinez, Jose R. Martinez. Hunter, your new nickname is Yoda. Is Yoda man? That's a good well, one. Well, that's, that's might, we might one. have to make him a t-shirt here. <laughs> it says Thanks, Yoda. Jose. I, I appreciate thought it was maybe because he was ugly. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. That would have been funny if he was just like leads into it. He was like, because yo, uh, you're, <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're ugly. Yeah, instead of Yoda man. Sweet. All right. Um, Gilbert. Old Gilbert. He's in the building, ladies and gentlemen. How do you guys feel about using mesh tape for real seats? Yeah. Yeah, for especially like bigger saltwater real seats, yeah. absolutely. That's the yep. stuff. It really maximizes the bond. That glue kind of gets all in the mesh. That's the one to use. That is the one to use. Part so. number is mesh tape. If you guys didn't know, Whoa. we named that one right. I was going to say, you must have come up with that one. <laughs> wow. Fantastic. Uh, All right. Well, <clears throat> I think it's about time. I don't want my hot pocket to get cold. Okay. Um, we really appreciate everybody tuning in. Um, real quick, Susan, is ProGlue suitable for real seats and handles? Yes, it is. It is, yeah. yeah. I, and I, it flows a little bit. So if you yeah. kind of have a tight spot to get into uh, that maybe Pro Pace is a little tough to, to get in there, um, you know, you can put it in like one of those oversized syringes, yep. um, you know, and just remember that it flows though, because uh, for example, remember I was telling you about the, the VSS seat, uh, that would probably be a good spot for the pro glue because you could put some down in the grip, then when you put it on the, uh, then when you kind of mesh them together and you've got that little area in the top there, you could shoot some pro glue down in there and that pro glue will settle more than the pro pace. Because yep. the pro pace is pretty much gonna stick where you put it, but the pro glue will flow. So if you do that, just make sure that it's not stored upside down where it'll run down your rod blank or it'll sneak out from under a, a grip or a, a, a real seat or something. Make sure that if you need it to stack and settle, that pro glue is the one. Yeah. Good tip there. Cool. Thanks, Susan. Good question. I don't know if we've really ever. I mean, I think we've talked about it a little bit, Probably, but, but that was a good question. It's always a good really, question. Really, really yeah. good question. All right. How Let's about give some away. a grand prize winner? The so. big winner of an MHX mag taper rod kit. So uh, that's that's the deal. That's right big. That's a, that is a big, big winner and is going to be Aaron Robinson. A.A. <laughs> Ron Robinson. <laughs> I love it. Mag Taper Rod Kit. The Mag Taper, the MHX Mag Taper Rod Kit. So, uh, yeah, there's a lot of good ones to pick from. You can stick with the old MBA 43, maybe step it up a little bit, go to that 874. Yeah. That's the one. That is the one. Well, congratulations, Aaron. Good job. Also, the runner up, Justin Bray, if you're still with us, congratulations. Handle kit with a CRB palm swell. And the third place, is uh just was it justin howard brandon howard brandon i went to school brandon, with him brandon. come on brandon howard 25 dollars gift card and a crb color series real seat um yeah i think it was brandon howard right yeah cool well we'll have to maybe give another one away if we booted that up <laughs> <laughs> that's on your bar up. Yeah. that's it yeah hunter mckamey <laughs> wins the third place fantastic all right cool um yeah, I need to get home. We got iCast Whew, tomorrow, all next three days. I think Chet was going to come see us. Chet, we'll see you there. Um, what else is going on? Anything else? No. That's a Do we still have some of those clearance blanks in there? Yeah, I think so. The ones There's that were some. like pearl white and that. Those were nice. There might be a few. 
Yeah. If there are, you better go right now. You better get them. Um, cool. Well, as always, we appreciate everybody's questions. We had to pull Hunter McCamey out mm -hmm. of the out of the bed today, but you know he wouldn't miss this for the world. No. The show must go on. The show must go on. So. Thank you for joining me as always. No problem. And uh, thanks everybody for watching. Hopefully we got to all of your real seat questions. If not, make sure to hit us up in the Mud Hole uh, Live Rod Builders Workshop Facebook page. Um, that is, as always, the before and after uh, for the show. Um, you know, all the other questions, you know, try to direct them to the other, uh, the other Facebook page. You know, we, we like to try to keep it pretty uh, I don't know, pretty geared to rod building, pretty geared to the shows, stuff like that. You know, we've got multiple pages for that. We love when people share the photos, just like the guy, uh, I think it was a guy, that yep. shared the plate seat. Uh, keep them all coming. I know, um, what's his name? I think his name is Chris Stanton's been sharing a lot of stuff in there, does some cool thread wraps. Uh, we love photos of the fish. We love photos of that. And uh, we appreciate, uh, you know, everybody being cool in there, yeah. you know? We hadn't seen any, nobody getting out of hand, and we appreciate it. So uh, Man, it's grown so fast too, just in a, what, yeah. a month or two. It's it's big, huge, it's going huge, even huge. huge. So, all right. Well, we will uh, probably come to you what maybe the first week in August. I'm not sure what uh, I want to say. The first Saturday in August, I think the third. So I got a uh, fish that day. So that would be what, maybe the. The sixth. sixth. So probably, if you want to put a little bit of money on it, maybe some, uh, maybe a mud hole gift card on a, on it. Probably August sixth is when we will see y'all next. And uh, yeah, I think that's about it. Okay. Don't know what the, don't know what the show will be next, but always keep those questions and suggestions coming. That's how we come up with this stuff. So always. Cool. Awesome. Well, we'll let y'all get out of here. We're gonna go get some lasagna. Thank you again for joining. As always, it's Hunter McCamey. Chris Adams. We'll see you next time. See you next time. Thanks.